Hey, what's up everybody? Got a new video for y'all, the ultimate fried seafood platter. Let's go. All right, so first we are gonna start with one of the most perfect sides for any fried seafood platter. I'm talking about some homemade hush puppies, y'all. No, I'm not talking about shoes. I did have some back in the day growing up, but I'm talking about these fried hush puppies with cornmeal, or in this case, I'm using Jiffy, one package of Jiffy. And if you saw, I just grated a half of a large white onion. If you ever wonder what like that savory taste is in hush puppies, it's the onion that does it, y'all. So grate it up. You can finely dice it if you want to, but grating it is much better. And then I'm going in with a quarter of a cup of flour, third of a cup of half and half or milk, one egg. After that, I'm just gonna season it very lightly with a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper and then a little, little sprinkle of salt just to bring out all of them flavors. Then of course y'all know me, I'm going in with a couple little sprinkles of fresh parsley just to brighten it up for a little bit of color inside of the hush puppies. And then after that, I'm gonna go in with a half of a stick of melted butter as I'm just stirring everything all together, whisking it all up together, making sure it's all thoroughly combined. And then y'all, after you mix it all up, this is what you should have. You wanna make sure that there's not like a whole lot of big old clumps of that Jiffy batter in there. And when you do that, it is time to fry them all up. So I have my oil preheating on 375 degrees and then just wanna use two spoons and just drop them in there basically. And these things really do not need a lot of time to cook at all. You would actually be very surprised. So as soon as I got finished putting all of the hush puppies in there, it was literally time to flip them over. And you can see in real time, like how quickly they really cook. And look at that, perfect. They're nice and golden brown still nice and soft but all the way cooked through in the middle and these are just the perfect fried like doughy accompaniment to like i said earlier any fried seafood platter i don't know if any of y'all have ever heard of arthur treachers but growing up we used to always go there and i used to always get the hush puppies whenever i got like the fried fish platter so so yeah this is kind of like just my like take on that and y'all you can definitely find this recipe online you can tweak it however you want to you can add diced up jalapenos you can add in cheddar cheese you can do whatever you want to make them make them make them make them perfect for you make them however you want them to y'all so i'm just going in with the next batch this all in all makes about 20 something small hush puppies but if you want them a little bit larger like you see here they probably make like i don't know 15 or so and that was enough for me i don't need that many hush puppies <laughs> and yeah y'all this is what they are looking like that second batch when i took them out of that hot grease and they just look so good they look like fried oysters honestly and that jiffy really just is really just a star honestly it's so multifaceted. you can do so much with jiffy you would not even suspect and so i just dusted it with lightly with a little bit of salt and y'all the hush puppies are done so now it is time to get on to frying all of this seafood we have y'all so y'all already know i love my louisiana and the fish fry so i am going in basically with that whole bag <laughs> i like to do it in increments because we have a lot of seafood that we're frying up so I'm just doing it in increments. And you see right there, I have three eggs that I'm going in with and I'm just gonna beat them all up. Add in a little bit of hot sauce, just a dash of that. All right, so first up is our large jumbo blue shrimp. And I'm just showing you how I like to clean them. So just use some shears to cut along the backside and then remove the shell very carefully. Make sure you still keep that tail part intact and then just devein it. Make sure that there's no little like line of uh, gunk and boo-boo. <laughs> just take that all out. And then y'all, the shrimp are done, so I'm just going and dunk them into my egg mixture. And then after that, I'm dunking them into my Louisiana fish fry. And y'all, I don't really like a whole lot of just heavy coating when I'm, whenever I'm frying seafood. I really want the seafood to be the star and then the batter to just be like a light accompaniment to it. You know, I don't want the batter to be overpowering. So that's why I'm just doing one single layer of this uh, batter over the shrimp. But if you want to, after this step, you can dump it back in the eggs and then dump it back into the Louisiana fish fry. So I got the shrimp breaded all up. Now onto my fish, I have some fresh flounder filet and I also have some nice blue catfish filet. Well, one blue catfish filet, I should say. And then y'all, you literally are doing the exact same process for breading off the seafood. So I just dunk it in that flounder into the egg mixture. Then one by one, I'm just putting it into that Louisiana fish fry, shake it all up, stir it all up, knock on it, whatever you need to do to make sure that that batter is in all of those little nooks and crannies and pockets and crevices and holes and everything. Make sure that that batter is all up in there, y'all. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing to that catfish. 
and that catfish is just beautiful look at the back side of it and it's just I, I i love blue catfish y'all then like i said do the exact same thing so if you can see catfish has a lot more surface area and a lot more of those like little crevices and nooks and crannies than other types of fish fillets so pay a little extra close attention to that and then you set this to the side and you are ready to start on the fried crawfish so i think one of my other videos i think the mashed potatoes with like crawfish and shrimp and sausage gravy i talked about frying up some crawfish and i actually had it one time and that stuff is actually really good y'all so i'm just trying out my hand on it right here so i just have some crawfish fillet mm, fillets wow <laughs> i have some shelled crawfish that I picked up from Walmart, literally from Walmart, and you get it frozen, and then you do the same exact thing, y'all. These crawfish are very, they're like, they remind you of like popcorn shrimp, so just be careful with them. Don't do a whole lot in the egg mixture at one time because it'll just be a little bit harder to fish them all out of there. Or you can use like a strainer to fish them out. Do whatever you want to do, y'all. So now, the crawfish are nice and breaded. Now it is finally, finally, finally time to start cooking this fish so first i'm starting off with the flounder i just placed them in there gently away from me in my cast iron skillet with some vegetable oil about two inches or so inch and a half to two inches of vegetable oil that you want to make sure is preheated to about 375 degrees and y'all after about two minutes on that first side it is now time to flip that flounder over and i should also say flounder is a very very like flaky soft buttery fish so definitely definitely be very very gentle with it when you're flipping it over i made that mistake and i kind of like had a little piece fall all apart but i mean it all goes down the same way and it still tastes all the same so it was not that big a deal but just giving you a little warning and flounder is very very finicky and very very fragile and i'm not gonna use no more f words <laughs> So after that flounder cooked for like five minutes or so, it is now time to drop in that catfish. And I just, I just love catfish. I just could just have the screen on this catfish for the whole time. But I know y'all probably don't want to see that. So after a couple of minutes on that first side, I learned my lesson. You see, I got the tools. I got the tools now, y'all. I got the tools. So you just flip that catfish over nice and gently because that catfish will definitely, definitely burn on you. And don't splash your grease all over the place. Please do not because that's just accident waiting to happen and so you see i flipped the catfish over then you want to allow it to cook on that side for another couple of minutes and now i flipped it over again this is the presentation side that you see right here and i don't want to have it cooking too long on that side because i don't want it to burn so i'm just using a little tool of the tree and i'm just using my tongs to literally just use that hot oil and kind of like baste it <laughs> baste the top of that catfish honestly just to bring the color out a little bit more and just to make sure that it's all nice and cooked through so do whatever you want to do, y'all, but that's just one of the little tricks that I like to use. So now it is time to fry up these nice jumbo blue shrimp that I picked up and i'm splitting them into two batches i have about eight shrimp i believe it was eight shrimp so i'm just splitting them into two batches make sure that oil is on 375 degrees dunk them in for about four to five minutes maybe five five to six minutes or so and this is what they are looking like y'all so now i'm done with the shrimp and now it is time to fry up the crawfish so i literally did all the crawfish in one batch because you know they're very very small and they will cook really really quickly this cook no longer for no longer than like four to five minutes definitely cooks really quickly and when you dunk them in you just want to make sure like you saw me do just take them all out and kind of separate them a little bit just to make sure that they don't fry all together and you just have one big old crawfish funnel cake looking thing so after about four to five minutes boom that is what the crawfish are looking like these things were so so good definitely definitely try out fr fried cr crawfish wow i cannot talk fried crawfish <laughs> now y'all i took the crawfish out and i'm just gonna fry up some nice crinkle cut fries I, you know just a classic accompaniment to a fried seafood platter so again i'm not gonna over talk this part it's very very simple as you see just dunk the fries in there cook them up until they're nice and golden and nice and ready to go So 
So, I don't know if y'all have ever been to Five Guys before, but Five Guys has the most amazing Cajun fries ever, and that is the brand that they use to make their Cajun fries. So, just sprinkle on some of that Cajun seasoning, some of that Bayou Cajun seasoning over your fries, and boom, you have Cajun fries. So, boom, look at this ultimate fried seafood platter. Y'all know I have to give y'all some close-ups. And y'all already know, y'all already know y'all are going to see me eat some of this stuff. It was so, so, so good. So first, I'm going with that hush puppy. It was just calling my name. And I like to eat my hush puppies with tartar sauce, so that's what I did. No, I did not make the tartar sauce this time. But if you want me to, I definitely can show you my recipe for a nice tartar sauce. But look at that hush puppy. Look at the, just, just look at that. You can see the parsley in there. You can't really see the onion, but the onion definitely adds a nice little bit of tang, a nice little bit of savoriness. Perfect, y'all. So now, just that shrimp, again, into that tartar sauce. I wish I had some melted butter to dunk it into, but I didn't. <laughs> but that shrimp was also good, that jumbo shrimp, and I just squeezed a little bit of lemon on there because y'all know how I do it. And then doing the exact same thing, dunking it back into that tartar sauce just to get that nice lemony, lemony bite. Now, onto that flounder. I'm trying to be real... I'm trying to be real gentle with it all here, right? Because <laughs> y'all see me eat it. I didn't even want to bite. I didn't even want to dunk the flounder into the tartar sauce. I just wanted to taste the freshness of that fish, and it was good. Same thing with the catfish. I wanted to just taste the freshness of it. And of course, you cannot forget the white bread. It has to be white bread. It has to be bleached bread. <laughs> and you use that to make a bed for your fried fish with a little bit of hot sauce. That is some good eating, y'all. So, y'all, I really, really, really hope you enjoyed this ultimate fried seafood platter. Definitely, definitely, definitely let me know what you thought down below in those comments. I love reading y'all's comments. And, yeah, y'all, y'all can hit that like button. You can hit the subscribe button. You can share the video to all your family and friends. And I will see you in my next upload very, very soon. All right, thanks, y'all, for watching. Bye.